Well, good morning. Welcome back to Catching Up with the Cody's. About, oh, I guess it's been five, six, seven, eight, about nine months ago. Uh, if you follow the channel at all, you'll uh, remember that I switched over from a lead acid battery to a lithium battery. And there was a few things involved with that. One of them was, uh, of course, the lithium battery itself. I got a smart shunt, and then I had to get a different uh, charger converter. The charger converter I have, or had, was just for lead acid. So I did my research, and I bought a unit that uh, from WFCO that has auto-detecting, meaning that it can tell the difference between lead acid and lithium. Well, after many months of use, I, I kind of had a sneaking suspicion that this unit was not auto-detecting and was not charging the lithium battery as it should. So I did a lot of research on YouTube, watched some different videos from uh, National RV Training Academy, uh, talked to a lot of different people, and kind of came up with the conclusion this, this unit was not auto-detecting. So I took some measurements, um, you know, kind of verified my, my hunch, and uh, sure enough, yeah, it's not auto-detecting. So what I did was I called WFCO, reached out, well, actually I emailed them, reached out to them, so listen, I'm having this issue. I don't think this unit's working right. And they were really great to work with, guys. If if you're having a problem with a piece of equipment, I really do suggest call the manufacturer. Talk to them. Get a hold of their technical support because they can give you information that you can probably get on the Internet. But as with a lot of things on Internet and, you know, here on YouTube, uh, it may be good information, but it not, might not be totally accurate. So I talked to WFCO. Uh, they had me measure some things again, asked me some different questions about my unit, and we came up with the uh, solution of sending the unit back to them. They sent me a call tag, uh, cost me nothing. I pulled the unit out, put it in a box, put the call tag on it, it went back to them. Uh, in three weeks' time, this unit was back to me, ready to go. Now, uh, with my conversations with them, as we talked about how we use this unit, I had the option of having this unit set permanently to lithium, to, to an LI mode. And I chose to do that because I do not plan on going back to lead acid. Um, now I'm gonna, if the, if the unit isn't marked already that way, I'm gonna put some stickers on it that, you know, maybe lets the next owner know that, listen, this is not set up for lead acid battery. If you want lead acid battery, you need to put a different charger converter in it. But in the meantime, here it sits. It's back on my bench. It came in on Friday, and so I thought we would open it up, take a look at it, and then uh, walk it out here to the trailer and get it set up. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Now what they call, when you send this back in, what they call this, this is really hard to do with one hand, what they call this is a firmware update, meaning that it, it's not software like on your computer. They actually go in and take the unit apart, open it up, and make some physical changes to it. And if you look right here, let's see if I can get that so where you can see it, there's a sticker they put on it that shows it's had its firmware done. So they've changed something on the inside of this unit so that it's supposed to auto-detect. Now, remember what I said on, on mine, I had the option of setting this strictly to lithium so there is no switching, and that's what I had them do. So there's a jumper in there somewhere that uh, bypasses that mode so that this unit is only going to do lithium. And that, that's really what I wanted. I didn't really want this thing... Um, trying to switch back and forth. I wanted it to go in there and charge my lithium batteries. So, um, I think in the last video I showed you guys what's involved in th getting this thing back installed again. You have to take this little wall down, pull it apart, and it's a little dark in here. I hope it films okay, I do have a light going. But the unit sets right here. But its power cord has to go all up in through that mess. Now I've showed how I did that on a previous video. So I, I'm not going to show that again. I'm not going to go through all that again. Once I get the unit back installed, uh, I'll bring you back and we'll talk about some other issues, okay? Okay, back in the trailer. I've got the power cable hooked back up to the uh, converter charger. 
Now, one of the things I noticed when I pulled this out, there were a lot of loose screws in here. Um, let's see if I can point to them without getting shocked. Um, there, see one just fell out. Those are from uh, this bus bar where there's nothing screwed into it. So they've just been sitting in there loose. And when I open this thing up, there's a whole bunch of them laying in the bottom. So before I go any further, I'm going to check everything and make sure they're all tight. So I'll uh, bring you back as I put this back together. Okay. So charger converter is back in its place. Ground wires secured back on positive and negative are back on. And I stuffed this little rag in here because there's a gap and you don't want to chase screws down there. That's no fun. So anyway, we're going to plug it in, turn it on, take some readings, see what happens. And hopefully everything is as it's supposed to be. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Let's see what happens. I got a bunch of stuff taken out of here, so it's kind of a, a mess. Let's see. Okay. Now, where I store my trailer, oh, I have a 30 amp receptacle installed. Oops. Not 50 because I didn't have 50 available, but it's nice because, as you can see, it's got its own breaker. Okay, I heard the beep from the trailer. That's good. <laughs> no, no sparks flying around anywhere. That's that's good. Let me see if I can see a light in here. It's supposed to be a blue light when this thing is on lithium mode. Let me turn that off. Well, I can't see it from where I'm at, but we'll uh, we'll take some readings and see what we get here. Yeah, it's putting out 14.5 volts. So, that's good. It never did that before. So that's a good thing. Now, over here at the battery, let's see what we get. Let's see if I can set you up somewhere here so you can see with me. I don't know. It's kind of a tight spot. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to be able to read that or not, but I'll read it to you. Okay. The battery is reading 13.74, but that's right because as, as we know from our basic electronics, as amperage goes up, voltage goes down. So as this converter charger is stepping up its amperage, to charge the battery, its voltage will go down at the battery. So hopefully, when this is all done charging, we should be able to go and read at the battery over 14 volts. That's how it should work. Okay. Well, I think we're gonna call this a success because the converter charger is doing what it's supposed to do, which is a permanently stuck in the lithium mode. It was sending um, voltage to the battery at over 14 volts, which is what it was supposed to do. And it has uh, charged the battery. It's kind of in that float mode now and doing what it's supposed to do. So we're going to call this a success. What I suggest is that if you're having problems with a piece of equipment, yeah, YouTube is great. Call the manufacturer, talk to the manufacturer, because if there's a problem going on widespread, and this obviously was a widespread issue for them to already have a firmware update available. And this was for the older units, by the way. This is not for the newer units. I bought my unit off Amazon. Um, I don't know, it didn't come directly from WFCO, so who knows, it could be one of the very early units that was just sitting on a shelf. That's why I got such a good price on it. There, uh, there was no way for me to tell when it was manufactured, but WFCO knows they have a problem. They're addressing that problem. So we're going to uh, give them credit for doing that. Uh, in, our, in our business, if we have a problem with a client, we sure like the opportunity to try to make it right and to leave the client uh, happy with the outcome. We've always said it's how you deal with a problem that 
sets the bar for your company, not whether you have problems or not, because everybody has problems. Everybody's trailer has problems. Everybody's electronics has problems. It's the customer service you get and their willingness to correct the problem that is how you judge them. So I'm gonna give them a thumbs up. Where's my thumb? There it is, give them a thumbs up for this one. And we're gonna call this video finished. I'm gonna go uh, put everything back in the trailer. We've got a trip coming up in a few weeks, so we wanna get everything back in. I've had to pull everything out of that bay, which we keep pretty packed. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.